Hey guys, welcome back to the food forest. Today we are going to do a little quick walk around tour. I know that I did the Algonquin videos, uh, the intro video just recently. I've got a bunch of footage to stick together into more videos, but I, I totally understand that I'm a gardening channel. So I want to put out gardening videos interspersed between the Algonquin videos, but I fully understand that most of the subscribers are here to watch gardening videos. The reason why I'm doing these Algonquin videos also is that they're almost like a uh, fishing line in the water to kind of catch more people and hook them into permaculture. Who knows how many people three years down the road might look for a Mew Lake campsite video, find my channel, and then discover permaculture that way. So if you don't really like the camping videos, I just suggest skipping them if you don't want to watch them. Watch them if you do want to see something interesting and different. but. Trust me, I fully understand that I'm a gardening channel and I will stick to the gardening channel stuff. So along that line of thinking, let's get into the quick little garden update tour. So it's looking a little different in here. We've got almost all the peaches off the tree. So there's still a few that we've left on um, just to kind of fatten up. But my uh, boss actually came over and took a whole bunch of peaches and we've kind of tidied this up quite a bit so that's kind of good news it's one less job i have to do and we have got a bunch more peaches now to process so last year you might remember that i mentioned my boss ordered too much mushroom compost for his gardens around his house and he thought of me and asked me if i wanted to take any and then when i showed up to take it refused to take any of my money for it so this year i turned that compost into peaches and returned the favor I really like these kind of barter style agreements, even though no agreement was ever struck. But I love the idea of someone's surplus turning into someone else's surplus and then everyone benefiting from it. I think that's something that we have to do more of. So this is what happens when you go away for a week. You get peaches falling all over. And we were taking peaches off the tree. We did a huge harvest just before we left. So we got to clean this up. We don't want bugs and insects to kind of um, have a breeding ground here on these peaches. We'll compost these. We'll plant new trees with all of these peach pits. The guardian of the peach tree. William's been busy making peach muffins, so this is batch number two of those. And then we've got all of these peaches here as well to still process. Our freezer is full of frozen peaches. Our dehydrator is full of peaches. And these are some red star peaches. This is one of the peach trees right by the pond. So I haven't tried these yet. They're not quite ripe yet. Um, but this is a variety, whenever I, someone asks what kind of variety of peaches you have, I don't mention this one because I haven't tried it yet. So hopefully that'll change and I'll be able to tell you guys how good or not these red star peaches are. But they're quite big. Like that is, that is a big peach. So here are the dehydrated peaches. So we've been running trays of these. And these were cut to about, um, half an inch to three quarters of an inch thick and then laid down and they make great candy so this is when the kids want a snack they're at least eating a dehydrated peach instead of some kind of gummy bear or something like that so common question i get is you know how much does the food forest cost to do guys food forests make you money think about how expensive frozen fruit is in the grocery store we've got two four, six, seven bags of peaches here. I think we have another one upstairs. We've got um, kale, we've got mushrooms, we've got chili peppers, we've got more sca uh, scapes and more scapes and blackberries here. And this is in probably the last two weeks that we've done this. We have all those peaches upstairs still. We've been eating 20 peaches a day. Peach muffins, peach cobbler, we gave hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of peaches away um, it's just money coming out of our ears 
and it's not necessarily that I'm going to go sell all this stuff. It's just that I don't have to buy any of this stuff. Like how expensive is frozen fruit in the store for smoothies? It's, it's so expensive. So make sure you start your food for us because, you know, these peaches, I bought these trees for $25 each and one bag of those peaches is probably close to $25. Like I said, honestly, this is a quarter of what we've had so far. Um, in the whole entire yield and that's just peach trees. We're coming into grapes and apples and pears There's just so much food raspberries strawberries. None of that is here right now So tons and tons of food So while we were gone on the Algonquin trip my mom actually came over and helped process some of the peaches Lucy looks like she's getting some off the ground there um, and our freezers are now full of peaches and we've got another batch in the kitchen there to still process. So it has been a very, very bountiful year this year, specifically for peaches. So now we're looking around and trying to figure out what the next phase is going to be of the food forest. We've got sea buckthorn coming in, so the berries are all starting to get orange. We're going to be very good about harvesting all of those this year because last year we got most of them, but we left a lot on the tree just because I was sick of picking them, but they're so nutrient dense, these berries, that I really, really wanna make sure that we get as many as we can into our freezer for smoothies and tea and all that kind of goodness. So we're gonna definitely focus over the next couple weeks picking some of those. I don't know if you can see the dragonfly right there. So it's nice, the proximity to the pond here that we can get these dragonflies coming in because these guys are predator extraordinaire in the food forest. So we're coming now into, we have grapes to process, tons and tons and tons of grapes. That'll be next. Then we got sea buckthorn. We've got the second set of raspberries coming in now. And we've also got strawberries that are probably gonna start in the next month or two. We've got pears coming. Currants, I believe, are done. We have elderberries here, if I just back up. So actually this is something I have to do right away if I want to get any of these is we have to get these elderberries off the tree and into syrups and process these. It's, there's not too too many of them this year but the birds will absolutely take every single one of these if I don't get them. I love sharing my food with the birds but I do like to get some of it. And that is done we have got apples so these I don't know how many of these I'll realistically get. I'll probably keep a bunch in the forest at the bottom for the deer to kind of just keep the deer from popping up in the winter time eating our trees. So what I'll typically do is allow all the apples on the trees at the bottom of my valley, which is down there. We'll leave those all on the trees for deer food and hopefully that keeps the deer from pushing into our property. Now this is a neat observation here as well. A few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, I talked about how I leave tent caterpillar nests up on the trees. If a tree gets covered in them, I'll remove them, um, but I'll always leave some. And this tree only had pretty much this section of a branch with, it was just teeming with those tent caterpillars. Anyone who's seen them, they know there's thousands and thousands of them in their nest. Well. I'm trying to break that pest cycle by leaving some up to allow the predators to kind of keep them in check. And I'm trying to avoid these swell shrink cycles of pests where if I were, for example, to remove all of the tent caterpillars, then there's no predators around to eat them. And because I get no predators, then the next season when the tent caterpillars take off and go crazy, I have no predators to keep them in check. So we've been trying to leave some up and if you notice, there's almost no damage on the tree. Like some of these leaves right where the tent caterpillar nests are, they got destroyed. But other than that, this whole entire tree is totally fine. And in that video, I mentioned that this tree can handle a little bit of pest pressure. And I think this is a really good observation to make that Sometimes we see a pest and we think of eradication right away and it's really important that we just take a step back and we let balance happen and you can't have balance without the pests. There has to be some yin and some yang. You can't just have all yang guys. 
So here is Wildflower Hill. It's looking almost the same as the last time I showed it. The Rudbeckia really flower for a very, very long time. We've got Queen Anne's Lace in flower now. And it's kind of nice to watch this evolve over time, see what different things are flowering. And look at this oregano, it's just still flowered and still covered. The amount of work that this one plant has done for my insect population is ridiculous. So don't forget about your herbs and your flowers, guys. It's so important. If you're gonna grow food, you're gonna depend on these insects and you have to have food for them open all year long. So this fig tree is probably sitting at five feet tall right now. This is five feet of growth in one year. And the figs are roughly the same size as I showed you last time. We've got some figs, probably about eight or ten figs on this tree. Eh, looking maybe more like 15, 15 figs or so. And this is the tree's second year of life. So the idea is that each year is putting more root energy down. The roots are getting stronger. So every year when it regrows from being cut to the ground, it's going to grow back faster and stronger. So stick around. We'll see how this thing does next year as well. You're thirsty, eh? Here is the polyculture in a pot update. And Lucy, Lucy update. Hi, baby. You're kind of in the way. We went to Algonquin for the last week, basically. Hasn't been uh, watered at all. In fact, I don't think I've watered this thing in about two and a half months because it's rained so much. But you can see that um, certain plants are kind of going through their natural life cycle. So it's looking like these plants are, you know, in rough shape and some of them are a decently rough shape. They're just getting acclimatized to the pot. This is kind of what happens to all plants. And the root systems will get stronger and next year will be even more interesting in here. But, you know, for example, this is just the raspberry's natural life cycle. Let's go look at some other raspberries just to kind of show you what I mean. Um, even the yarrow, this is just kind of its natural life cycle. It's just going to seed right now. So here's our main raspberry patch and it looks like, you know, something's happening and some plants are dying. Well, not really. That's just what wet raspberries do. So they're, they live on a two-year cycle. New canes come up. They survive for one year. They go back and the next year they fruit again. And then they die at the end of that season. So right now we could go around and clean up the obvious dead ones. The ones that are, they're not quite dead yet. We're going to let them put that energy back down into the root system. There's no point um, intercepting and stopping that natural process yet. So we'll clean those out probably this fall. But this is just what raspberries do. So the raspberries in the pot, they're not struggling. They're just going through their natural life cycle. Oh, and I think Lucy just got stung. Oh, poor thing. So this is another thing with fruit trees is you have to be careful when you're... <laughs> she took the peach. You have to be careful when you have fruit falling on the ground and what you touch because there's almost always if the fruit has fallen then it's super super ripe and if the fruit is super super ripe then you're going to get insects coming into it and eating it and we can throw that into the woods and maybe plant a tree but we have to be careful picking them up because they're usually covered in wasps so i think i probably planted at least at least 500 to a thousand peach trees this year just by planting all the pits so here we've got a slightly shadier position and we've got some raspberries. Have to be careful when you see an ant crawling on a raspberry, it's probably um, probably no good to eat. You might want to just toss that one. But you can see that we've got lots more raspberries coming. So there are multiple seasons for raspberries depending on the sun aspect of all your plants. And right now this patch here in this Kind of extreme polyculture these ones are now putting on tons of fruit so you can um, delay your fruit and spread out when you're getting your fruit 
just based on where you're planting it as well. So the same plant, same land, same climate, same everything, planted in a slightly different location. This is exactly the same variety of raspberries. These ones are about a month behind, and because we staggered them that way, we kind of get raspberries all through the year. So that's really nice. Let's show you some real life as well. A lot of people only show the good stuff. Oh, I just missed it. Um, if you don't get your raspberries fast enough, and if you ever see stuff like this, where you have holes in the raspberries, chances are that hole's there because something was in there. So um, we have these little uh, beetles that get inside our raspberries, and if we don't pick them ripe enough, um, we, we leave them too long, then those beetles could get in. So we don't spray anything, but that be, that basically means that sometimes um, that beetle's gone there, buddy. That basically means that other insects are going to live in our raspberries. So, so just make sure that you're eating and you're you're picking your raspberries when they're really, really um, like you, just before they're super, super ripe. That one is mine. So melons are doing pretty good. We've got some tomatoes coming up here. See some of the melons back in there. So this little patch here has done really well for us. So I think I'll leave you guys there and we are going to have to pick some of these after work today. I'm just on my lunch right now. I have to get back in. But we'll pick some of these and we'll we'll start processing some of oh my gosh. That's really good. We'll have to start processing some of this stuff. Like I said, it's just food coming out of everywhere. Just keep planting. Remember, you, you take one action and you start planting something today. And then you just have free food coming in for pretty much the rest of your life. If you do it in a permaculture, perennials, sustainability, regenerated uh, soils type of way. It's all about the big picture, guys. It's all about that long game. So start playing it and start planting today. He prances when he gets his berries. Little berry monster. Hey buddy.